I'll just give my response that I give to people, everyday people. When I'm at my like young professionals event, I'm like, they're like, oh, what is, what is that? Ah, uh, you know, we're just going to grab a sample and bring it back. And then we'll do, then the real science begins. <laughs> Iris Rex um, is a mission to get a sample from the asteroid Bennu, which is a carbonaceous asteroid. We're going to image the asteroid as we approach it and as we orbit it. And then so OCAMS is really the Osiris Rex camera suite. So we do a significant amount of imaging uh, required for the mission. Osiris Rex is, of course, centered here at the U of A. At the Drake Building, which has been responsible for multiple space missions, many Mars missions, in fact where we have all the facilities we need. We have a thermal vacuum chamber to do any TVAC testing that we're required to do. And then we have um, a class seven clean room where we build um, all the cameras and test them in the same environment. The U of A has the uh, principal investigator's office with Dante Loretta, where he runs the science team and the entirety of the mission. We have the Spock Center, which does all of the processing of the spacecraft data. But then we have OCAMS and, and uh, OCAMS is the mission critical camera system. The three cameras have very three different, very different roles to perform on this part of the mission, but they're the major visible light cameras for the spacecraft. We do have in the back of our mind that, you know, most of what people are going to see from this mission is going to be the pictures of the asteroid. We realize we're kind of the PR firm for the mission besides all the science value that the cameras do. It's one of the more complex camera systems because of the number of boxes, the number of cameras, the wide uh, set of requirements that the cameras have to uh, achieve, have to satisfy during their life. The cameras just finished a milestone. Um, they passed their pre-ship review, which is the, the final review that we have here at the University of Arizona. Uh, before the cameras get delivered to Lockheed Martin where they get integrated to the spacecraft. For the flight units at the U of A um, and a majority of the team, uh, certainly the, the biggest part of our role on the team is, is over. It feels like it's not even running a marathon or an Ironman competition. I don't even know how to explain it. It's, uh, I imagine if it was an athlete, it's like running up to an Olympics or something where you spend three or four years just working to this goal and then you're finally there and you get to see how everything performs. It was actually fairly emotional. There's a lot of pride associated with all the work we did and getting it done, but it's also like, wow, this whole big chapter of our life is sort of coming to an, an end. All we, these things are my babies, man. You know, I've, I've worked on them for, typically a flight camera, you bring it there, you've worked on it for a year. The only analogy that seems to match is watching your kids grow up. Delivering the flight instrument is, you know, like that's the, the pinnacle of this whole project and getting it onto the spacecraft safe and sound is, is you know, our primary focus right now. You would think they're just cameras, you know, the, the, the technology isn't even all that challenging, but everything is challenging when you do it in space. And it involves a lot of people, a lot of really amazing people with a lot of uh, unique expertise. I was describing to, to someone in the high bay the other day that uh, these things end up looking like pieces of art, even though the intention was not to create art. But the perfection of, of building the instrument making sure that uh, the form follows the function. It's a it's a really specialized and unique endeavor that we humans do. We, we like to think of it as routine because we've been doing it for so long, more than 50 years, right? 
but it's by no means routine. You know, at the end of the day, what you know, I'm it's a lot of pride that you know, say, like, hey, I was part of a team that did this. And uh, you know, there's pride of being in the team, and then there's definitely it's like, yeah, I was able to, to create that. You were in the eyes of the explorer, and that's what these cameras are. There's our there's our eyes out there exploring the universe, and you saw it for the first time. It's something nobody's ever seen before. That to me is the, the exciting part, is when you, when you get knocked backward in surprise um, and something completely defeats your, your preconceptions. You'll absolutely never forget that. It is so unique and not too many people get to see that.